Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with the review of the Saima X8W. Uh, now this is basically the same as the Saima X8C that I recently reviewed, except this has a Wi-Fi FPV camera. You can see the antenna here at the back. Uh, and that means that you can use a smartphone app and then you just mount your phone here in this clip on the controller and then you get a real-time FPV uh, video transmission back to your phone. Um, however, you know, as I've mentioned with other Wi-Fi FPV systems, it's pretty, it's a little laggy and kind of short range and stuff, so it doesn't work great for actual FPV flying unless you're pretty close to yourself and, you know, you can kind of uh, account for the little bit of a delay it has. Um, the camera is pretty low quality. They they claim that it's a two megapixel camera, but it sure seems to me that it's uh, lower quality than that, or at least uh, the recorded footage is rec is lower quality than that. Uh, it records to the phone. It does not record to the camera. There is no you know memory card slot on it anywhere, anything. So. Um, this camera is purely just sending the video to your phone and then the recording is done on the phone uh, So that's a you know if you if you don't have a lot of space on your phone that can be a little inconvenient um, And then you know because it records in such low quality You know sometimes I say maybe the point of a Wi-Fi FPV is just to kind of give you an idea of what you're filming but you know this camera isn't really good enough to film with uh, so there, you know, you can't really FPV fly with it and you can't really film with it So I'm thinking maybe you know if you mounted your own like Mobius or GoPro or something on top here And then use that just to kind of line up your shot with another camera uh, Maybe that's the idea there or you know if it is just to kind of get an idea of what it is to You know fly with something like a phantom that has a, a real-time um, footage as well just to kind of get, get an idea of what it's like to fly something like that but um, not exactly sure what the point is again kind of like with the X8C I thought that camera was a little bit low quality for the quad itself um, so it's a, this is a kind of a weird model but I think it's just to kind of you know get get a feel for what it's like to fly something like the Phantom um, but it is a really nice flying quad. I mean, just like I said with the X8C, um, you know, I really like the way it flies. It handles well. It looks good. It's, you know, nothing really bad to say about it other, you know, besides the camera. The quad itself is really nice. Um, the battery is a 2S LiPo, 2,000 milliamp hours. Uh, let's see, that takes about three hours to charge and you get a, you know, wall balance charger here. So you balance, put the balance plug into the charger there to charge it. Um, so again, that takes about three hours to charge. Um, with the camera on and no prop guards, you get about 11 minute flights. Um, and that includes about a four minute long LVC warning. So really long LVC warning. Um, but that's, you know, 11 minutes total, so like 7 minutes and then a 4 minute LVC warning. Uh, so pretty long flight times and, and really long LVC warning for you there. Um, it does come with prop guards and there's these little like caps that you can uh, pull out of the, the edge of the motor there and then the prop guards slide in and there's a couple screws that secure them in. Um, I did not record flight times with the prop guards on, but I mean, relatively to the quad, they are quite light, so I would doubt they make much of a difference at all. Um, it also comes with a set of spare props here, um, some tools and some screws and stuff. These are um, part of the props to secure them onto the motor and the screwdrivers and the screws. Um, guess that's about it for the stuff it comes with. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is this plug type is different than what the X8C had on it. Um, and I'm not sure exactly, I think this is called a Super Tiger, uh, but it's spelled T-I-G-R-E. Uh, because I have an old charging cable from one of my um, old Habako planes that has the same plug, but you'll see they're the same, like they're both male. So I can't use this charging cable to actually charge this battery because I need a female on my charging cable. 
Uh, so I don't know if they make those or not. So I've had to only charge this from the stock charger. I don't have a um, actual hobby grade charging cable for it, but I do believe, I mean, those certainly look to be the same thing. So I think that is called a Super Tiger plug. Uh, for those of you that are looking to get that for, you know, an actual charger. Uh, let's see, let's look at the transmitter here. It's, you know, the same as the X8C. It's kind of a hobby grade style. Nice, big, you know, fits in your hands really well. Gonna work well for pinchers or for thumb flyers. And, you know, nice hobby grade style. So I, I really like that. It's, you know, it's good and solid in the hands. Uh, we've got on the left bumper up here, the left bumper button, that's your rates. Uh, you've got two different rates and then one yaw rate. And the yaw rate's a little bit on the slow side, but, you know, decent for an aerial uh, videography quad. So not too bad. I mean, you're not going to be sport flying with this thing. Um, and then you've got flips. You hold the right button and then move the right stick in any direction you want to flip. And then flipping a big quad like this is kind of dangerous, so you know, make sure you've got plenty of height before you do that. Um, it also has headless mode, which you press and hold the left bumper, and then the LEDs are going to start blinking to let you know that it's in headless mode. Um, let's see, it has really nice, big, bright LEDs on it here, these huge um, bubbles here, and then it also comes through on the top of the arm a little bit there and then you've also got these stripes on the front arms there so visibility for orientation is quite good even though all the props are the same color um, in the front is red leds and the back is green leds so a little bit reversed from what i would you know traditionally like but um, like i said they're really bright and with these stripes on the arms it's really easy to keep orientation so no problems there um, the battery compartment is in a, a little hatch here in the back and you've got plenty of room for all your cable and everything and then it does have an on off switch so you can go ahead and get your battery all plugged in and closed in there and then you know wait until you got it set down on a nice surface and then go ahead and turn on your on off switch there and you're ready to go so I always like that and then you'll see the camera does have a few different angles. I don't know how usable that angle there would be. It looks like you'd probably catch mostly props and part of the body, but uh, you can adjust to three different angles there. Um, but you know, it does have a nice straightforward angle for you know FPV flying, even though you kind of lean forward a little bit, so it's still gonna have a bit of a downward look to it. But um, you know, that is pretty nice to have it adjustable. Um, let's see, is there anything else to say? Oh, you can uh, recalibrate it. Um, since it has headless mode, there's, you know, you can recalibrate the accelerometer or headless mode. Uh, so both sticks down to the left do one, and both sticks down to the right do the other. I'm not sure exactly which is headless or which is the accelerometer, so just do both when you want to. Both sticks down left, both sticks down right. Um, uh, yep, looks like that's all there is to say about it. So let's go check out some flight footage that I uh, took out of my parents' house. So I got a nice big open field to fly it in. So, oh, and I did want to mention I did have one uh, little signal loss during that flight. There was one time I just, you know, it, it stopped responding and it kind of just took a path and crashed into the beans. Uh, so I don't know if that was maybe some interference with the Wi-Fi signal or what happened there, uh, but I have not seen that happen, you know, before that or since then. So I think it was just a random freak occurrence, and I don't really know what to make of it. Uh, but I have not had, you know, dropout issues other than the one time that you're about to see in this flight footage. All right, well, let's go check it out. All right, this is the flight review of the Sima X8SW. This is basically the same as the X8C, except for this has the uh, the uh, Wi-Fi camera on the bottom there. So I've got my phone connected to the Wi-Fi network coming off of the camera. And so you get an FPV view. A little bit hard to see out here in the sun, but I can see it enough probably to maybe do a little bit of FPV flying. but. Um, I can trigger it to record from the app here, so I'll go ahead and do that at some point. But at first, we'll just give her a spin. I'm on high rates. Got a little bit of a breeze, but I think it should be able to handle it. 
flying into the wind there. Yeah, no problem. Oh wow, it got moving with the wind. This thing has got some speed. Uh, that was weird. I just lost my signal there for a second and it went flying into the weeds here, into the, the uh, soybeans. Luckily, uh, I was not way out there. No idea what happened there. I just lost the signal for a second and then came back on. Hmm. Now it has me nervous. What was that all about? I'll just kind of keep it calm here nearby for a minute, see if it drops out again. I don't know what to make of that, why that happened. Huh. Let's, uh, let's try a flip. It's scary flipping a quad this big. All right, let's look at the app. Yeah, man, it's hard to see. Kind of put it in my own shadow. Yeah, I'm getting some dropout, even out here, way out in the wide open. You know, I'm out in the country, there's nobody around, no other Wi-Fi signals or anything, and it's still pretty laggy and um, kind of pausing on me here and there. I am just not a fan of Wi-Fi FPV. It just does not, it does not work as actual FPV. But you can use it to kind of line up your shot, but not really to fly with it. So let's go ahead and start recording. So now I can kind of just get an idea of what I'm filming with the app. A little bit of a breeze, but looks like it's handling it all right. It's getting pushed around a bit, but it can fight it. This is a pretty nice quad for the price, man. This thing is nice and stable, flies good, it's got a bunch of power. I don't know what that one little dropout was about. That was very strange, but it seems like it's working fine now. Alright, let's go ahead and stop the video. Let's just fly a little bit more. So you can get pretty aggressive. Those stripes on the front arm is keeping my orientation really good, actually, without even being able to see the uh, LEDs. Those stripes on the front arm are really doing a good job. All right, well, I think that was a good demo. Let's bring it back in for a landing. the Sima X8 SW with the Wi-Fi camera on it. Pretty cool. One weird little drop out there, but luckily it did not cause any problems or cause me to lose it or anything. So I'm not really sure what that was, but I'm not really too concerned about it because it seemed to work just fine after that. But anyway, go ahead and check the video description for price and purchase link. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.